Today we're diving into YouTube's favorite subject, the art of self-care and self-love. In this video, I'm going to teach you seven powerful feminine energy and feminine embodiment practices that I consider foundational for the art of self-care and self-love as a woman. It's almost 2025 and I don't have to tell you that self-care isn't selfish. You've heard it a thousand times now and I'm so glad you have, but unfortunately hearing it and knowing it up here isn't the same as really believing it and embodying it all here where our life gets lived, right? But it is true that our cognitive mind likes reinforcement. So I'm just going to tell you for the millionth time that self care isn't selfish, but truly it is the foundation. It is the bedrock of a beautiful life and a beautiful self. So you know, on this channel, we talk a lot about beauty and stepping into and embodying your most beautiful self. But beauty is far more than what the world may deem as pretty or attractive or hot or sexy or whatever, you know? Beauty at the deepest level, at the soul level, is a relationship. Beauty is the relationship you have with yourself, with your body, with your soul, with the spirit, with the world around you and with others. Today, I'm gonna to share with you seven of my favorite self-care practices to help you reconnect in this relationship with yourself, with beauty. These practices will also help you elevate your energy and reclaim your radiance as a woman. These aren't just tips, my friend. These are powerful tools to help you reprogram your subconscious mind so you can create the reality you desire. Manifestation is all about embodiment. It's not about doing or having the things. It's about being the woman. And once you be, then it's much easier to do. And then the having comes naturally. Are you ready? Tip number one, ground yourself daily. First thing in the morning, ground yourself. Grounding practices help to stabilize your own energetic field so you can cultivate an inner ground of security. Grounding, you don't need to overthink it. Simply step foot outside with your bare feet or take a deep breath into your bones and visualizing the air soaking into your bones. It can look like massaging the bottoms of your feet, spending any amount of time in nature whatsoever, going for a walk, getting your hands in the dirt, or if you don't have access to those things, simply visualizing roots growing down into the earth from the bottoms of your feet anchoring you, supporting you, stabilizing you. This is square one. When you feel secure and stable in yourself, in your body, in your bones, in that first chakra, then so much more spaciousness opens up to experience and feel and create. And something I teach my clients how to do is to massage that K1 point right here at the bottom of your foot and to speak the mantra again and again, roots in the earth, 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 and feel that connection to the ground. That mama earth energy is so grounding, so stabilizing. And what we love about that inner stability is that we don't have to look to anyone else to help us feel safe and secure. We actually can cultivate that from within. And it's really important for being able to access and elevate our feminine energy. Remember, the feminine needs to feel safe. And it's your responsibility to cultivate that inner safety and stability. It's nice if you have friends and a lover that makes you feel so safe and secure, but do not wait for the outside, for other people in order to give you that gift. It's truly the best gift you can give yourself in the whole wide world to feel safe and secure in your own skin, in your own body. And you can start by doing simple things like grounding practices daily. Check my other YouTube videos for more specific embodiment practices to help you ground and I'll guide you through them. Also, I'll leave a link in the description box below because my course Body of Bliss gives you over 12 innovative feminine embodiment practices. I call them the She Power Practices. They are sensual healing exercises to help you access that sexy, holy energy from within. These are proven practices that I go back to again and again and again. They are amazing and I highly recommend you check them out. Cool. All right. Tip number two, cultivate a sensuous relationship with water. 
As you know, water is the main component of our bodies. The earth is mostly water too. Our bodies at birth are about 70% water and into adulthood about 60% and our brain is about 75% water. Water is magical. It's one of the cardinal elements, earth, fire, air, water. And maybe you heard of the Emoto experiment, where a Japanese scientist in 1994 studied the effect of words and intention on water molecules. And what he found was remarkable. He discovered that words like love and beauty had a molecular effect on the water molecules, creating patterns of harmony and beauty. And words like hate and fear created very different patterns in the water molecules of chaos and distortion. You think about that. Having this relationship with water where you are relating to water as the gift, as the beauty, as the possibility that it is, opens up a whole new world. From the moment you take a sip of water in the morning, awakening the channels of sensuality. So you step into the shower and imagine that the water is cleansing you, purifying you, and down the drain goes all the old programming, all the old thoughts and beliefs shedding the layers of the old woman you used to be and infusing, hydrating, nourishing the woman you desire to be. So I love this idea of creating a sensuous, a sensual relationship with water. And how you do it is really simple. Just by paying attention to your senses when you drink or when you interact with water, whether it's bathing or drinking or looking at water in a waterfall or even a fountain, just feel that intimate connection and awaken, intend that your cells awaken to the sensual relationship. Water is the element of this sacral chakra. This is our feminine energy. This is, this is the storehouse of our sexual energy, our sensual energy, our creative energy, and it's deeply feminine. When we can create this intentional, sensual relationship with water, our whole world begins to change. We actually start to feel more in flow. When we are intentional about this relationship with water, how can we not be in more flow? Flow is the nature of water, and we can relate to that experience, that quality, just by our intention, by just subtly shifting all the ways we interact with water throughout the day. Water is deeply connected to our feminine energy and our emotions. No emotion is bad. Emotion is energy in motion, and it's meant to flow. It's meant to move. So cultivating this sensual relationship with water will also help you create a more sensual relationship with your emotions, allowing every emotion Emotion to flow through you, not getting stuck in a loop in any one, but allowing yourself to be present for life and to feel it and to let it move on. You don't need to attach to anything. It's an emotion. It has information for you. Feel it, experience it, and then let it flow. If you have access to a bath or a spa or a body of water like a lake or an ocean, I highly encourage you to make bathing a ritual. One of my favorite mantras I say to myself as I dive into the Mediterranean at all times of the year, especially in January and February when the water is quite cold, I say to myself in every cell of my body, these waters are healing me. These waters are healing me. These waters are healing me. And that knowing, that intention gives me the inner strength and the resilience to withstand even the coldest water. And of course, you don't have to be in cold water to do this mantra. You can be in a bath of salts and bubbles and so luxurious and comfortable and warm. And you just whisper over yourself, this water is healing me. This water is healing me. This water is healing me. Or the next time it rains and you're at home, why not run outside in it to find a little patch of grass or gravel where you can just dance around in it? And just say to yourself, this water is healing me. This water is healing me. This water is healing me. And then go run and jump in a warm shower or bath. Trust me, this one tip will radically transform your life. We are reprogramming our subconscious mind to pay attention to the possibility of beauty all around us. And if there's anything you get from this video, it's that beauty is a relationship. And the deeper and more intentional and intimate we go in this relationship with the world around us, with our own body, with her own life, the more beautiful our life becomes. Tip number three, I love this one. Sing or scream. 
Every single day, I want you using your voice. You can scream into a pillow, you can sing in the car, you can sing in the shower, or if you don't feel quite comfortable with your voice yet, just hum. There's something so soothing and feminine about the voice, however it emerges. As long as it's moving from that raw, authentic place, there's nothing ugly about it. Even the ugly sounds are beautiful when they're coming from your depths. So sing, scream, hum throughout your day, and you'll find it has this amazing pacifying effect on your emotions. No matter what you're feeling, whether it's anxiety or depression, or maybe just a little bit scattered and monkey mind, just start singing. Or maybe start your singing session with a good scream, and then feel how it feels in a minute or two. Things will have shifted. Monks and nuns and saints of all kinds have been chanting and singing for centuries. And what modern science has discovered with the power of the vagus nerve is that when we sing in certain rhythms, our breath takes on a certain cadence. And this cadence is so soothing to that vagus nerve. When it vibrates with breath or with song, it is tenderly touching, massaging, loving every single one of your organs. Ministering to your own vagus nerve is one of the best things you can do to yourself to feel more grounded, present, elevated, and connected to your body and soul. Tip number four, booby time. Yes, I want you to massage your breasts daily. Not only does your doctor want you to do this too, to check for lumps or any irregularities or anything different that may be going on in your beautiful breast tissue, this is one of the hallmark feminine embodiment practices and self-compassion. I've also found in my work with women who are struggling with shame around sex and sexuality and any form of sexual trauma, that this practice is a healing practice, bringing you back into relationship, a beautiful relationship with your own feminine body, one that is safe and secure and so loving. That tender touch, beginning at the breast, massaging all around the belly and the thighs is so healing. It's one of the first practices I always have my clients do because it's just so powerful to connect us back to our bodies, not to mention it improves lymphatic flow. And when things are flowing, we just feel better, always. So how you do this is really simple. After you shower, you can use any natural oil of your choice. I love almond oil, sesame oil, olive oil, coconut oil, all those things are good. Just make sure it's a natural oil. And you can even put a few drops of your favorite essential oil like Lang Lang or sandalwood. And begin by tenderly touching all over your breasts. Breast massage techniques I teach in Body of Bliss that help you feel that queen energy, that goddess energy. But right now, let's just start simple and just begin with tender touch and a circular motion, just bringing that sweet smile to your face and sending that love down to your boobies and all over your body. All right, tip number five. This one is so important. I feel like I'm trying to teach my daughter this all the time. She's 12 and it's simply this. Pay attention to your language. Pay attention to your language, pay attention to the tone of your voice, and pay attention to that self-talk. If you've noticed so far in this journey, every single one of these tips I've brought you has been dedicated to one of the energy centers. First with roots in the earth, the first energy center. Central relationship with water, that sacral center. Screaming, singing, that I am center. Breast massage, that heart center, and now we're at the voice. The voice, the fifth energy center, this chakra is responsible for all manifestation. The word is the seed, and we hear it in Christian literature as well. The word was God. The word, the power of the word. Your words shape your reality. Both the words that you say out loud, but most importantly, the words that are on loop in your brain. It's been proven that positive self-talk can reprogram your subconscious mind. That's why I create so many subliminals, affirmations, and guided meditations for you. I wanna help you get in there to help reprogram that subconscious mind and trade all the negative self-talk, self-judgment, self-critique, self-hate for a softer, more loving voice, more generous voice. What I mean by paying attention to the tone of your voice is for women, so often we apologize for taking up space, we apologize for what we want, for who we are, and in order to do that, to kind of smooth things over, we superficially raise our voice and try to be as little and as tiny and as 
feminine, perform feminine as possible. And it's not doing anything for you. <laughs> it's actually undermining your sense of security, stability, and access to your true feminine essence. So what I teach my clients is to speak from the ground up. And you can practice this by simply saying, I am, I am, I am in my voice. I am in my voice. Slow your language down. Don't be afraid to take time. And you may want to consciously try to speak from a lower register to see how that feels. I remember I used to speak in a very different way. If you go back and watch my earliest Christian yoga videos, my voice is different then. That was before a lot of the healing work that I eventually end up doing in the realm of feminine energy and feminine embodiment. And there's something so beautiful about coming home to your voice. So this connects to screaming and singing and humming and speaking, speaking words of encouragement over yourself, speaking words of affirmation. And if you don't know where to begin, I get it. Start with one of my affirmation videos to give you some language and to help guide you into that place. And always, you can just say the two words, I am. I am is the most powerful affirmation you will ever say, and you don't need anything to qualify it. You can simply speak, I am. I am, I am. Practice that now, experience that now and see how something subtly is shifting. You don't even need to say I am beautiful or I am strong or I am confident, but suddenly those qualities will start to emerge because the I am is so powerful. You are so powerful. Your language, your voice, how you choose to talk to yourself. It can either deflate or elevate your feminine energy. It can either rob you of the experience of your true essence or reconnect you with it like that. Tip number six, see yourself with soft eyes. Oh, this may be my favorite tip of all of them. This has such a profound effect on rewiring your subconscious mind. Seeing yourself with soft eyes is the most powerful self-love and self-compassion practice, in my opinion because it changes how you perceive yourself. Like Anais Nin said, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. So if we want anything to change, we first need to change how we see, starting with our perception of ourself. So seeing yourself with soft eyes isn't just a nice idea. It's a physiological practice. And I actually have a video, I'm gonna link it right here so you can practice it because there's a specific technique I want you to use to actually drop into an open focus state, which will help you drop into that parasympathetic state, which is that rest and relax state. And when we're in that state, seeing ourselves from that state, suddenly our wholeness comes into view. We don't have to go seeking for it. We don't have to seek for love or for beauty or wonder if we're okay. We are okay. And we can see it clear as day. It's our sacred wholeness. And whenever we drop into that soft eyes, open focus state, we have access to a whole different realm, a whole different consciousness that allows us to see things closer to as they truly are. It's so simple. We just look in the mirror or look in our reflection or, <laughs> or swipe open our phone or swipe open the selfie function of our phone and soften our gaze. And we just sit there and allow whatever feelings to come up that will come up. In the beginning, it's completely normal to not be able to hold your own gaze. It's completely normal to feel unsafe seeing yourself with such kind and loving eyes. Just notice it. Just notice that tendency to want to run, to want to hide, to want to fidget, to want to go do something else. Just notice it and continue to bring your gaze back to yourself. If shifting your self-concept and healing your whole self-image around your femininity, around your beauty, around your worthiness, around your sensuality and sexuality, if that's something you're working on, I have a whole course for you. It is my most popular course for a reason and it's called Heal Your Own Gaze. And I encourage you to watch the testimonies of all the other women because it's something that humbles me every single time. The good news is that healing the way we see ourselves, being able to see ourselves with eyes of love, with eyes of acceptance, with eyes of compassion, with eyes of giddiness even, is easier than you may think. 
We just need to get in there and start to reprogram our subconscious mind. And there are specific techniques we use to do that. In the course, I take you through guided meditations and I teach you about the archetypes. There are six key archetypes that help you to activate these different aspects of your feminine energy, your feminine essence, to help you reclaim what always belonged to you. I would love for every single woman to give herself the gift of seeing herself clearly and loving herself unconditionally because I know when she does, the whole world changes. The whole world opens up to her. So that's tip number six. See yourself with soft eyes. And when you see yourself with soft eyes, that also extends to everyone else because there's no separation between you and I. Seeing yourself with soft eyes also allows you to see me with soft eyes. So thank you for that. The more grace we have for ourselves, the more grace we have for others. And this is how we begin to heal the world. Tip number seven, put on your crown of light. Do it with me right here, right now. Imagine I am bestowing on you a beautiful crown of light. Feel its energetic presence on your head. Feel how it just makes you want to sit up a little bit taller. How immediately it elevates your energy giving you more access to your innate nobility. And just feel that right now. Feel that shift. And know that you can put on your crown of light anytime you want and no one else has to know. You're having a moment with your kids? Put on your crown of light. You're feeling misunderstood by your partner or your spouse? Put on your crown of light. Someone pissed you off at work or in traffic? Put on your crown of light. Looking in the mirror and not liking what you see? Put on your crown of light. There's nowhere that this doesn't benefit the situation. Talking to your ex about co-parenting, put on that crown of light. Just imagine and really feel that beautiful, glowing crown on your head and carry yourself as the nobility that you are. All right, so those are seven of my favorite self-care tips to help you reconnect to the beauty of your feminine essence, your true feminine essence and to be in relationship with these energy centers that really are gateways to your wholeness. They belong to you. These are resources within you. I highly recommend my most popular meditation on YouTube. It's actually the Feminine Wholeness Method's presencing tool. And in 20 minutes, it will guide you through a journey of reconnecting with and activating the seven main energy centers of your body. So that is an awesome practice to do along with these practices, these feminine embodiment tips to help you get in there and reprogram your subconscious mind because this is the ultimate self-care. This is self-love, not just a once in a while bear hug to yourself or a you look cute in the mirror, but actually daily practices that work on all of your energy centers that help you to truly be in this beautiful relationship with your body, your body's wisdom, your spirit, your soul, and the world around you. Now, before we go, I want you to close your eyes with me and just imagine that you are practicing one of these tips. You're incorporating it into your daily life now. Picture yourself moving through the day, grounded, sensual, expressive, and radiating your true essence as a woman. This is so much more than self-care. This is self-transformation, which is what self-love really is. All love is alchemy. And as women, we have this special gift, this magic within us to practice that alchemy in our daily life. First and foremost, starting with our relationship with ourself, our body, our soul. By consistently practicing even one of these principles and these tips that I've given you today, you're not just pampering yourself. You're actively reprogramming your subconscious mind. You're using the power of your embodiment and your imagination to create a whole new reality. This new reality that you're creating with these practices is one where you embody your most beautiful self and get to step into and live your most beautiful life. If you take nothing else from this video, remember, beauty is a relationship. It's how you relate to yourself. It's how you treat yourself, your body, your mind, your soul. It's how you nurture your spirit. And it's how you intimately engage with the world around you. I encourage you to become a huntress of beauty in your life. What you seek, you will find. And if you want more beauty in your life, start looking for it. 
start looking for it in the clouds, in the sky, in the trees, on the street, and most importantly, within yourself, in the woman in the mirror. Remember, the mirror doesn't smile back until you smile first. You get to initiate this new relationship. So no waiting. It starts now. You made it this far into the video. Your soul wants this, and you're ready. As you deepen your relationship with yourself through these practices, you will naturally find your feminine energy increasing and elevating. You will become more radiant, and your life will transform too. Thank you so much for being here with me. Remember, you can trust what lights you up. What lights you up leads you home, and home in your body and your soul is a beautiful place to be. I'll end the video here, and I trust it was of value to you. Please like and subscribe, and tell me in the comment below, which one of these seven tips are you going to incorporate first? I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you in the next video.